we had yesterday, which was driven by, and I can't even believe I'm explaining this now, but, but it's driven by the uh, motor vehicle insurance index that's in the CPI number, which is a lag piece of data, which is basically just working through the, the increase in car prices caused by uh, COVID, right? There, there are Fed news, uh, Fed working papers on this. And so the thing that I find most interesting is Jay Powell comes out and says he needs to have confidence that the data and the data that, that CPI is going down. I just gave you two plausible, reasonable assumptions that if we're back in university talking, we would control for this, right? And in Canada, if you control for shelter, Tiff Macklin yesterday. I can't get the camera to start. That, you know, where is sticky <laughs> inflation? He's concerned about mortgage interest costs. They well, can, we'll just wait. That's the central banks. That's the Bank of Canada raising rates. There it 30 comes. percent of CPI is caused by comes. the Bank of Canada. All right. Hey, everybody. Everything's changed around. It's pretty much good. That's pretty much good. Hey, kitties. Hey, everybody. Um, hey, Carnegie's painter, you made it first. Wow. Pretty, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. They mustn't, they mustn't have you working today. Saber Delta, the one. Hello, Ronnie Atkins. Matt. Um, Shagoya, uh, UConn busted my, do you know that if uh, the other team right now, I'm forgetting who they were, had won, I would have won the whole pool, but good for UConn. Hey, Matt K, uh, Tony Saint, uh, Scott, Kitties, uh, Sabre, Pilot to the Moon, Tom N, Pilot to Da Moon. All right. Um, I don't know if Ham's going to come live. He hasn't called and asked me to go on his call. If he asks me to go on his call, we'll be shh, and we won't give him any of these questions, and we'll listen. But he's going to be going tomorrow uh, to meet with the attorneys uh, for, um, well, I guess you could say for Donald Trump. But I, they're certainly for the company DJT, and this is huge. We're gonna, we're gonna, um, I think, finally get some purchase, so we can talk about that. I want to talk. I've called several of you. I want to talk about this gold project if you're interested. You don't. There's no pressure to do it. But they, I just talked to the uh, main uh, company guy. And he's slightly changed their goal, which I think is great for us. Uh, and, and basically, don't raise very much money. Do a third-party um, engineering report over the next two or three months. And uh, we're off to the races. I think it's great. So anyway, I reserved with a guy I'm working with half a million. Um, so I technically, I only, I only have half of that to raise, about a quarter of a million. But um, anyway, we, we can talk about that. I found my list of stocks that I had recommended uh, on 1218, 12, 1218 closing price. And um, I circled uh, three of them in yellow. And I think these were the stocks I was suggesting uh, selling and then 31 days later buying them back. But all of these were for the so-called January effect. And frankly, there wasn't much of a January effect this year. It's been a full quarter. Well, anyway, we can go through those. I, I just got back from my trip to, uh, well, Sorry, I got back uh, uh, um, uh, late Friday night from my trip, and it was a good trip. On uh, 
uh, I, I really, really met and talked with people, oil and gas, oddly enough, Bitcoin. And I think, I think it was uh, fertile for future ways of making money. I don't know what else we can talk about. We can talk about uh, uh, Meghan Merkel, if that's interesting, and narcissism. We can talk about uh, the Middle East, which I think is probably more, oh my God. Um, we can talk about other things while Ham comes on. Uh-oh, we can also talk about the Donald Trump trial. National Enquirer publisher David Pecker takes the stand. Prosecutors detail the, quote, catch and kill plot to cover up the affair with Playboy model Karen McDougal. Trump is forced to listen to full transcript of, of course, they reduce it to grab him by the uh, uh, private parts tape, but they don't, they don't put the beginning. When you're famous, rich, tall, and the cameras are all around, they let you, they let you, they always leave that off. But anyway, I guess it's getting hot and heavy. And it's I guess it's getting hot and heavy. Let's just look at some of the prices around town around the league. Look at the scores around the league. Uh, there's a stock that I don't talk about anymore. Uh, down a little bit. Uh, not because I don't believe in it. Um, here's a stock I think you guys should be looking at as a trade. RCRT 137. Logic is down slightly at 0.032. I think that's a trade. Uh, DJT, I don't know what to tell you about that. 35.74. Fingers up a penny at 306. Uh, let's see what else. T low hits a new low. Is down $2 at 590. That's one of the most exciting stories I've ever heard, and they're going to destroy it because these young, arrogant punks are never going to need to elongate their lives. They're never going to need a therapy for uh, arthritis or, or uh, if this crosses the blood-brain barrier for dementia. They're never going to need any of that. These are hot shots. God's chosen people to, to destroy markets. Um, CAUD is 42 cents. There's a couple of stocks here I don't want to I don't want to mention um, because I've been asked not to talk about them. Northwest Bio was 48 cents, 48.6. Anyway, let me see what you guys are. Okay, I want to ask you guys something else. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I haven't prepared anything. But um, I put my Venmo in the description. And I've never asked anyone to subscribe. I've never asked anyone to like. I've actually never asked anyone to contribute. But I'm going to be going to New York this weekend to be there when Finger and their people are there. I'm going to be there a couple of nights. I just got back from this trip and a trip before that. I'm going to try to go to London. I really want to get a new computer. Anyway, I am at my wit's end because uh, I, I just need some, I need to replenish my working capital. So I put my Ven Venmo out there. I'm going to try to raise uh, 12 and a half thousand, not just from you guys, not just from you guys, but from other other things because I want to get a new computer. I want to start giving you better service 
because the frustration I have, I, you know, imagine if I could take this and then edit it into smaller bits. I also want to have uh, interviews. I, I'm going to have Anna and Kristen Shaughnessy on, uh, Anna, Queen of Trades, and um, uh, I'd like to get Richard Hoffman on on GTII. I was told this morning that um, the question I questions I answered two weeks ago, almost a full two weeks ago. Uh, that's just the beginning of the process to get my dividends uh, issued to me. So anyway, I just like to provide a better service. I know I failed you by losing my temper sometimes and reacting in a. Uh, in a um I, I don't know what word uh grumpy uh uh Im impertinent uh um snotty way to some people and uh, i just i need we all as a group need to start moving forward on how we're going to just not be victims get ready for what's coming and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be with some of the, the outside gains, at least not yet, that we I was hoping would happen first. Um, and that reminds me of something. I did a video from the airport. I think it was um, uh, Jay Ingram that he didn't really ask me to do a video on GTII, but he when I did a video on a different subject, he came back very, it was very clear, speak to GTII. And my um, thoughts as I were, was going through this shopping mall that our airports have become, um, full of people, you can't walk anywhere. No wonder shopping malls are wiped out. People just go to the airport. But, um, uh, I said that the GTII trade was a round trip, a round trip. People entered it at 20 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, whatever. It ran to nine and it's come back to where it was. Over the last couple of days, I, I've been thinking about that. It It is a round trip, but I should have also pointed out it becomes a new trade. That was the trade. Now, I expected that we were going to have a squeeze, and I've pointed out before that I believe there was a squeeze happening. And for whatever reason, as a group, we decided that didn't interest us anymore, and we went over to COSM, and that hurts people's feelings because Lou is dead, and how can you talk about it? Well, look, I... I um, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter who I, to you, it doesn't matter who I pray for, but I have prayed for Lou and his family. I've asked you guys to do it. And it's not that I'm trying to attack Lou. It's how we're, we, we're here to make money. And that decision, whether or not it was the right one, it, it in my opinion, popped the balloon of a squeeze. Now, in retrospect, his call was prescient in terms of getting out of GTII, but it's a little like, you know, it's, there's some power. What's the word? You, it's self-fulfilling, I guess, is the word. Uh, the problem was COSM was a disaster for 85% of the people that played it. There are some people that made money. But anyway, that's all yesterday. How are we going to make money now? How are we going to get ready for what the headlines are saying is the markets are all going to collapse. Now, in terms of the markets, everyone's calling for a collapse. To me, that means it's not going to happen. But it could. The thing to watch is the bond market, not the stock market. The stock market is under control by the Fed and the, and the hedge funds. They just buy six stocks. Maybe it's seven, maybe it's eight. And if there's a sell-off, they come in and buy them again. 
And then there's this lethargy in the market so that if you have put money in a fund or a close end fund or an ETF, the dividends and the additional monies just go into those same set of stocks over and over again. And the market is less of a predictive vehicle than a slow motion reiteration of what's already happened. It's like driving down the highway, looking in the rear view mirror and saying, we're going to be okay. And then the Fed comes along and reinforces that idea. So breakfast at Biden uh, administration can get reelected because that's Janet Allen's job. That's Gary Gensler's job. That's the whole coterie of advanced beyond their skill level uh, human beings that happen to not be white, straight male. And they count on their salaries, their benefits, the, the fact that they their inexperience and their lack of talent will be ignored because they check boxes. Um, they, we can't run our economy this way. I'm not saying that there aren't white men. Look at Look at uh, Buddha, Buddha Jake, Buddha Jake. Of course, he's gay. That checks a box. But there's a singularly untalented uh, uh, man who should not be in office. He was mayor of a city, a mayor. But anyway, let's knock that off on all that. that there's going to be a financial crisis coming. I personally think they're going to manage the stock market upward. Any correction is going to be counterbalanced by the plunge protection team, the Fed, the hedge funds, and they're going to try to make you feel like uh, God is great, Joe is great, Kamala is better, and uh, you know, don't vote for the man that grabs them uninvited by the um, by the uh, private bits. And uh, so I think the market's going to go higher for the next months. Now, there's a huge caveat, a huge caveat. If the bond market gives up the ghost, if people stop trusting that the Fed has any meaningful relationship to interest rates, everything I say goes out the window, everything I say. Also, after we get new highs in the market, I don't know, 20%. 30%, or even 40% higher. The S&P, 7,000. We're going to come down like a rock. And uh, I'm not sure the next president is going to enjoy being the next president. Um, the other thing that will delay the big reckoning, and I hope the reckoning is delayed, 20 years of no discipline in the markets, uh, represented mainly by Dick Cheney's arrogant statement, deficits don't matter anymore. That's because energy, energy is the source of all wealth. You can't refute that statement. From, from the dawn of time when there was slavery to now when there's machines, Money represents the unit of value created by energy, whether it's whether it's oil, human effort, horse, plow, it's energy. And so the arrogance is oil's priced in dollars. We have the military and yippee ki ia mofo. Well, that was Dick Cheney 20 years ago. And since then, there hasn't been a politician in either party successful in stopping runaway spending That's and borrowing. That's partly because a debt-based system has to have constant growth in the debt. And we're now in that hockey stick phase of the growth. Anyway, the one more weapon they have to keep this going as they steal our assets, they give us this paper, 
and they take our homes and turn them into rental property. They take our our uh, uh, futures, turn them into jobs in China and Mexico and Malaysia and uh, uh, Slovenia, and they take our our sense of security. While they they take their little bits out and buy condos around the world and farms and et cetera, that to keep this going, they're going to take us to war. And you can see that in the vote this weekend. Um, uh, both parties, the new House Speaker, we raised money for Ukraine, which is a hopeless cause, hopeless. In my judgment, we're lucky we have Putin on the other side. Imagine if it were a strident general. I think he's been somewhat reserved in his approach. But this guy Zelensky is a crook. And a bunch of the Nazis that he represents have committed war crimes. 300 to 500,000 Ukrainians are dead. The rest are fleeing. and and. Our, our people, Victoria Newland, Condoleezza Rice, maybe, the, the, the freckled uh, uh, Samantha Power, we've led Ukraine down a primrose path. That country is destroyed. Those eastern provinces are going to be with Russia now and maybe should have been. But you've got 26 or 27 nuclear power plants there. Why you would fight a ground war with radiation in the, the, the breadbasket of the Soviet Union, I don't understand it. But we're sending money. We're sending money to Israel, a country, pardon my observation, who part of which is hell-bent on killing Palestinian children, starving the rest of them. And as Jared Kushner said, hey, this is nice waterfront property. Let's just move the people out and we can build some great resorts. That's paraphrased. But we're sending money there. It's a great mistake. It's a grave mistake. Why? Because the Arab street and the rest of the world are turning on Zionism. That's not anti-Semitism. That's not anti-Israel. It's anti-slaughtering a, a population of people who are God's children. They're human beings. Two and a half to three million people live in an area no bigger than the, the confines of the L.A. airport. Half of them are children. Half of them are 15 years old and younger. They were born there. They've never been anywhere else. Hospitals are destroyed. Food and water is destroyed. Uh, infrastructure is destroyed. One group of soldiers lured uh, uh, parents and aid workers to a place with the screams of a, of a baby, the cries of a baby, and then killed them. This has to stop. We, we can argue amongst ourselves, oh, you're, oh, you're a whatever lover, and you're a whatever lover. But the fact is the rest of the world sees our hypocrisy, and it's going to redound on our financial markets, it's going to redound on our sense of security. That's all I'm saying. I get worked up because I cannot stand the human suffering that is caused by listening to that fat, arrogant, liar, Benjamin Netanyahu. Since he was in his 20s, He's been someone who tries to be clever with the truth, which is a polite way of saying he's a liar. Anyway, 
we voted money to the Middle East. It's not going to help us. Is Israel our ally or are they an albatross right now around our neck? And then we voted money. That the third area we voted money was, uh, I want to say Taiwan, but I, it's not coming in my brain. So we're going to go to war. Our answer to protect the New York, London, Tokyo financial system is to go to war. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to dedicate this little group, small as it is, I hope it gets bigger to providing a way for each of us to understand what's coming, listen to other sources, invite other people to talk so that we know how to prepare, act, and react to what's coming so that you can be independent financial islands who survive the panic, I think, that's going to come. I hope it doesn't come soon. And that you can help your families, your friends, yourselves, and your and the planet, the causes of this planet. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll uh, move on. <laughs> Sorry. I'll start at the bottom. Marlon, I don't have any finger news other than it's the same things. Uh, I did a video with uh, uh, Martin Shen about a month ago. He did a further video. Uh, the four or five areas, Marlon, it's the same thing. Uh, they signed a, a, or they submitted a uh, shelf registration for 300 million in September of last year. They specifically named Univest as their banker. In that was also the, the further registration of 25 million ready to go. That's still out there. And they've been working on that. They, they've worked on their earnings for last year. I believe they were just reported. Um, uh, there's a lag in how they do their reporting versus how most companies in the United States do it. But, the, but what's significant there, it's clear that Finger is going to go revenue positive and earnings positive either in the, I believe, in the second quarter of their 2025, which I believe will be the third quarter as we measure it. Once that happens, the shorts go away. Uh, as you know, Marlon, uh, news doesn't matter when you have arrogant Jeff Easton continuing to uh, have his clients sell stock. It's all in my opinion and judgment. Sell stock that doesn't exist. And they, they're continuing to do that. That will stop once there's earnings. And it's clear to the short sellers, the counterfeiters, that they're, this is going nowhere fast. That'll stop. The company just announced the DG Zoom or however you pronounce it. A revenue deal, which you can look up in the news, which is valuable. They are working on the second stage of the science for turning big data into revenues. They're about to monetize it for three of the biggest uh, insurance reinsurance companies in the world, uh, turning big data for their Sapienthus group into money. That's ongoing. It happens every day just because they don't give you a news announcement every day doesn't mean it's happening, Marlon. The fact is that as a CEO, if you put out news and you're repetitive about it, that's a violation of the laws and you can be sanctioned. If you're a criminal like Jeff Easton, in my judgment, and your, your criminal cohorts put out bad news every day and capybara and all that over and over again, Nobody cares. Nobody cares. And I'm tired of saying it. That's what we're up against. Um, the continued rollout, Marlon, of 5G in China, province by province, requires mandates by law, by law, that any consumer that buys a new phone in China 
to take advantage of 5G, which is all that's there, has to get so-called Apple Care on each phone. To the extent that they use Finger as their channel, and Finger is one of two or three companies that are rapidly replacing the two companies that were caught up in con controversy over buying minutes from the government at a discount and doing some sort of uh, money laundering with it, getting money out of China. They sanctioned, the government sanctioned those companies. They're expanding with two or three others. Finger is one. And to the extent that consumers buy their 5G phones via Finger, they Finger gets 25% of that $100, $150 annual uh, expenditure on a warranty. Finger is the gateway to the online shopping as it relates to their customers. Finger continues to buy minutes at a discount, sell them for a profit in an ever-expanding way that is the safest sor shor source of revenue you've ever seen. And that's growing. I've left one out. Oh, they're the Netflix of uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, there are rumors, Marlon. It's just rumors. We keep saying them over and over because everyone says, where's the news? Where's the news? But there are rumors of an acquisition of government revenue. And as Ham said, possibly a link up with Alibaba. Could you imagine that? A link up with Alibaba. So, Marlon, bottom line, there's no news today on Finger. Uh, there's, in my judgment, five or six items of news coming. What I notice is when they make their news announcements, they're always low key. They don't overpromise, they don't hype, but they perform. And it is inexorable that Finger is going to meet its targets, expand its revenue, and be profitable. And the clients of Lynn Partners, who Lynn Partners is just a pretender financial company. They're just a front for people who have a lot of money and cheat the system via the uh, reg show and via the which lawyers say, oh, it's a loophole. No, it's criminal. I, I don't have it right in front of me, but I can show you, and I've read them out before. The SEC makes it clear in its filings that before you sell a stock, you have to locate it in writing. But Lynn Partners clients, who they are a front for, criminally sell stock and finger that doesn't exist. Now, there's apologists out there that say, oh, there's systems in place. Oh, you can't just add up uh, day after day after day of FINRA data because the FINRA data is incomplete. Why would FINRA data be incomplete? Is FINRA there to help you, Marlon, or, or the criminals? I don't know. If it is incomplete, that has to be told to us. But the thing is, I watched with Finger back when uh, uh, Lou Bravo, uh, Frank Benedetto, and the, the Greek CEO of COSM came into these channels and said, get out of Finger, get out of GTII, go into COSM. COSM has great leadership. It has contracts. They're not going to short, they're not going to do a deal with the shorts. They're, they're changing their name. It's going to go up. They're, they're uh, uh, changing their QCIP number. That's going to cause a short squeeze. There's 2,000% short, which turned out to be an, a whole cloth exaggeration. But everyone listened. And everyone got out. Well, when that happened, Marlon, I watched. I added it up. I think I have pictures in my phone from it. 
the FINRA data for the next 10 trading days in Finger, they sold 100 million shares. Now, apologists will say, ah, there were private placements, and you don't know that they must have come in from offshore. For 100 million shares, they didn't exist. It's impossible. Oh, but they bought it back. You you can't tell. They, the FINRA doesn't report the buyback. That's just when the sale happened. But you don't see the buyback. Well, I'll tell you what. There were no sellers. No big sellers. You weren't selling. The buyback would have made the stock price go up. I never saw it happen. They took a short position, in my judgment, from 6 million shares to 110 million shares or more in 10 days. That's the Lynn Partners. That was over a year ago. I haven't seen any evidence of delivery of shares, of covering. But you ask if there's any news. I would guess um, uh, we should see news over the next week. Um, and I'm going to go to New York this weekend. And I'm going to meet with Martin Shen and maybe some of the other principals. I'm going to be there when the bell rings. And I'm going to try to find out quietly what news is there. And maybe I can do another interview. But there's no specific news that I've seen, as at least as of this morning when I looked. Maybe something happened during the day. Um, so that's my answer on that. Well, Netanyahu gave Yasser Arafat everything, including a Palestinian state, and Arafat said no. I recommend this book and his other one, The Hundred Year War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi. It is a difficult book to finish because it's written so well and it has a lot of information every single chapter. But um, you are correct in my judgment, my memory, that Yasser Arafat enriched himself. Um, their pa the Palestinian, the PLO, the Palestinian organization, uh, Hamas, all of these, they never organized the way the, Isra the Israelis did. And a lot of what they did was not effective in getting the Palestinian message across. I think there's an arrogance, De Velio, in your um, summary that we as the West have. The original Zionist message was a land without people for a people without a land. Well, that, that just wasn't true. It wasn't true. I sat at uh, Westminster Abbey, I think it's it was called. Anyway, there's Westminster Cathedral and Westminster Abbey. One of them. I, I, I was, as a favor to my friend, oh, come on, it, um, Mazin would appreciate seeing you. I was going to be there for 15 minutes. I ended up staying that whole day and the next day to my memory. And on the anniversary, and I think it's called Nop, Nopka, Nopka, Nopka. Let's see what Nopka is, what the definition of Nopka is. 
I don't know how to pronounce it, obviously. I must be mispronouncing uh, it. Oh, Nakba, Nakba, 5860 is where it's first mentioned. 1949. The Palestinian, 1949, the Palestinian polity had been devastated and most of its society uprooted. Some 80% of the Arab population of the territory that at the war's end became the new state of Israel had been forced from their homes and they lost their lands and property. At least 720,000 of, this is 1949, at least 720,000 of the 1.3 million Palestinians were made refugees. Thanks to this violent transformation, Israel controlled 78% of the former territory of the mandatory Palestine and now ruled over the 160,000 Palestinian Arabs who had been able to remain. Barely one-fifth of the pre-war Arab population. This seismic upheaval, the Nakba, or the catastrophe, as Palestinians call it, grounded in the defeat of the Great Revolt in 1939 and willed by the Zionist state in waiting, was also caused by factors which were on vivid display in the story his father told him. Foreign interference and fierce inter-Arab rivalries. These problems were compounded by the intractable Palestinian internal differences which endured after the defeat of the revolt and by the absence of modern Palestinian state institutions. The absence of modern Palestinian state institutions. The Nakba and The Nakba was only made possible, however, by massive global shifts during World War II. The outbreak of the war in 1939, that's World War, uh, put an end to the wrangling over the British white paper and brought a relative lull after the upheavals of the revolt. Still, for three years, under the battles of Al-Amin and Stalingrad in the fall of 1942, the danger of Nazi panzers arriving from Libya or through the Caucasus was ever-present. Jewish immigration slowed significantly as a result of the white paper and wartime conditions, while Zionist leaders enraged at what they perceived as, as Whitehall's abandonment of its commitments, Whitehall's commitments to Zionism, shrewdly looked to engineer a diplomatic realignment away from Britain and toward new patrons. However, during this slow, the Zionists were able to continue to build up their military capabilities. Under pressure from the Zionist movement and with support from British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, a Jewish brigade group of the British Army was formed in 1944, providing the already considerable Zionist military forces with training and combat experience offering a vital advantage to the conflict to come. By contrast, although a wartime boom in Palestine enabled some recovery uh, from the damage caused by the Arab economy, uh, caused to the Arab economy by the revolt, my eyesight, uh, the Palestinians remained fragmented politically 
with many of their leaders still in exile or in British detention, and failed to make sufficient preparations for the brewing storm. Over 12,000 Palestinian Arabs volunteered for the British Army during World War II and to work for the Allies. But unlike the Jewish soldiers from Palestine, they never constituted a single unit, and there was no Palestinian parastate to take advantage of the experience they had garnered. At the end of the war, a new phase of the colonial assault on Palestine was launched. This happened by the arrival in the Middle East of two great powers who had previously played a small regional role, the United States and the USSR, an empire that had never fully acknowledged its colonial nature and whose domain had been restricted to the Americas and the Pacific. After Pearl Harbor, the United States suddenly became not just a global power, but the preeminent one. Starting in 1942, American ships, troops, and bases arrived in North Africa, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. They have not left since. Meanwhile, the USSR, which had turned inward after the Bolshevik Revolution, spreading, started spreading its ideolo ideology, but avoided projecting its strength. The, the USSR had the largest land army in the world as a result of World War II. The USSR liberated half of Europe from the Nazis and became ex increasingly assertive in Iran, Turkey, and other areas to the south of the Soviet Union. Led by the dominant political figure in the Yishov, David Ben-Gurion, the Zionist movement presciently foresaw the shift in global balances of power. The key event in this real realignment was the proclamation in 1942 at a major Zionist conference held at the Biltmore Hotel in New York City of what was called the Biltmore Program. For the first time, the Zionist movement openly called for turning all of Palestine into a Jewish state. The exact demand was that, quote, Palestine be established as a Jewish commonwealth, unquote. As the national home, this was another circumlocution for full Jewish control over the entirety of Palestine, a country with a two-thirds Arab majority. It was no coincidence that this ambitious program was proclaimed in the United States and in New York in particular. Then and now, the city with the largest Jewish population in the world. Before long, the Zionist movement, and by the way, there's a difference between being Jewish and being Zionist. Before long, the Zionist movement had mobilized many American politicians and much of public opinion around their objective. This was a result of both this movement's unceasing and effective public relations efforts, which the Palestinians and the fledgling Arab states were unable to match, and of widespread horror at the revelation of the destruction of most of European Jewry by the Nazis in the, in the Holocaust. Uh, absolutely 
evil horror that happened to Jews in Europe. After President Harry Truman endorsed the goal of a Jewish state in a majority Arab land in the post-war years, Zionism, once a colonial project backed by the declining British Empire, became part and parcel of the emerging American hegemony in the Middle East. There's a lot more here, but I'm going to try to, uh, I'll, I'll skip that. But basically, De Velo, the uh, areas of government interaction and policy creation have been Jewish, Israeli, British, and, and U.S., and they have not involved the Palestinians at all. And unfortunately, the Palestinians have not been supported particularly by Arabs either. And I would agree with you. I'm no, I'm no fan of Yasser Arafat. I'm no fan at all. So the catastrophe was celebrated in Westminster Abbey or Cathedral on the 50th anniversary, and I sat there sort of in the back of the pew, and I moved forward because both my eyesight and my hearing is not perfect, and I wanted to get closer to a, a microphone. And every Palestinian who spoke from farmers, grandsons and granddaughters, to the elderly, to military, to part of the uh, diaspora, to diaspora, to, um, to uh, 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 doctors, to, to uh, authors, to all aspects of life in this massively overcrowded church would get up and speak for 15 minutes, Daviolo, Daviolo. I'm just an, an American trying to understand. And the stories I heard as the tanks trained by the British, led by Menachem Begin and other terrorists, as the tanks destroyed thousand-year olive groves, destroyed towns, overrode farms, and drove Palestinians out were heartbreaking. They broke my heart. And so I don't agree with you that Netanyahu gave anything to Arafat. All Netanyahu has promised things to distract us as he keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. But I would agree, agree with you that Arafat was an imperfect uh, re and, and corrupt representative for the Palestinians. But who represents the Palestinians? Um, uh, everything Netanyahu says is a lie. They do not intend that right-wing aspect of Israeli policy. They do not intend to have a two-party state. They do not intend to have any Palestinians in a land from the Jordan to the sea. Somehow they believe God gave it to them. When if you, I'm not a Bible thumper, but or, or I've never read the Bible. So what do I know? But when you read what God said, those who believe in me are my chosen people. Well, if you can tell me that Palestinians don't believe in God any more or any better or equally 
as Israeli Jews, you have an argument with me. There's Palestinian Christians, there's Palestinian Muslims, and I would say there's Palestinian Jews that believe in God just as much as that fat hypocrite Netanyahu pretends to. There's no man who could believe in God and can do what he does to children in Gaza Strip. Anyway, Dave Davio, that's my answer to that. I get a little worked up because you can't treat God's children that way. You can't do it. And that's personal. On the, on the financial side, the United States has been aligned with particularly the Saudi royal family. And the deal is pretty basic. You protect us, we'll pr price oil in dollars. And that that's what's at risk. So we, you and I can have our dif disagreements. And I actually appreciate your point of view, DeValio, because I think you bring up something that I've asked when I've traveled to the Middle East. How come you blame the United States? I've asked in when I've been in situations where I can talk. I've asked high people in Jordan, in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, elsewhere. How can you blame the United States when you don't do anything yourself? And so there are divisions. So anyway, Davio, I've gone on too much. I sympathize with Hamas? I didn't say that. I don't sympathize with Hamas. Do you know that Israel created Hamas? Study your study your history. Study your history. They they I see that's Marcus, that's unfair. Because what you're trying to do, oh, you're evil and we're good. If you question our policies, you're anti-Semitic and you sympathize with Hamas. Well, let me, Marcus, Hamas, as you know, is north. Hamas is the northern part. I, I'm Right now, my brain's not working. Who, what's in uh, uh, Gaza Strip? But on October 7th, there was something like 1,700 people killed. Marcus, you can look up Israeli news. The majority of those killed may have been killed in crossfire from Israeli soldiers, just young people, scared, petrified. But since then, Marcus, depending on where you read the press, over 30,000 Palestinians have been killed in the reprisal. Half of them are children. To speak for those children doesn't mean I sympathize with Hamas. I'm pretty clear. I sympathize with the children and the Israeli children or young people that were uh, killed. I sympathize with that. I'm against the war, Marcus. I'm against the war. And you say, talk about stocks. This has everything to do with our stock market and your, your security and your financial future. All right, I, I took him out, Rudy, Vin man. Uh, what's the news? What's new with Finger and GTII? Um, well, um, I would go, there's some great sources of information on Finger and GTII. Um, uh, Richard Hoffman does tremendous videos and tremendous interviews. I would follow him for information on GTII and Finger. Ace, 
who I think has now changed his handle, Days Economics. He does magnificent lives. I would go get your information on Finger and GTII there. And then there's a lot of information on Twitter for Finger and GTII. I would go there at mtimid. I'd say news on GTI is, oh, the website is offline. I didn't know that. Let me look, Lee. Let me look. Um, I, um, I, um, I'm going to New York to meet with Finger this weekend. I will have more information then. Uh, news doesn't, once you make your investment, it's important to check for news, but news doesn't update every day. It just doesn't. Uh, in the case, I I've gave a pretty long opinion of, of, of the news coming on Finger just a little while ago, but Finger I think is on the way to becoming. Let's say the stock has been circling around five dollars for the last year and a half. Lower and higher around four or five dollars i think once it gets in that earning stage that's irrefutable i don't know where it's going to settle but i would guess it would be more likely to settle around 15 or 20 dollars and circle around that value that's going to hurt the criminals because they're going to have to pay for those losses every month i think that's when you could see pressure in terms of a squeeze. Until then, I think Finger has a very strong possibility of doubling or tripling based on fundamental news. Do I think it's going to happen on overnight? Do I think it's going to be news that's going to trigger it? We'll see. With GTII, uh, here's, here's where it was when I when I continued my recommendation to sell it for tax loss purposes and buy it back in 41 days. GTII, you've got a battle internally between the CEO and key investors over control both of the company and the vision of the company. You've got uh, senior management at GTII who are in their senior stage of life. Probably one of them belongs in the home. That's not in the news every day. And I don't know if it's true. But it it's arguable. But let me ask you this. Uh, who is this? Um, at Timid. Let me ask you this. If you were a company seeking to incubate in what I think is a pretty good strategy that G GTII set up, and you looked at the CEO and president who's in his mid-80s, you looked at the board, I've, one of the guys, I don't know his age, but the other is in their mid-70s, and, and you looked at this and you said, okay, I want a young, vibrant company. I'm a young, vibrant company. I'm going to incubate for two or three years, and then I'm going to float, and I'm going to be able to launch with the best chance of success. Am I going to be turned on by, as Don Rickles would call it, hey, I'm a friend. A home. I just spoke to the home. They have, they're ready for you. I don't know. GTII needs an infusion of energy, direction, and commitment to take advantage of an enormous, according to him, and I happen to agree that it's big. I don't know if it's 500 million. But I, I don't think we should have to argue about the size. I think the government should make it transparent. What is the size of 
the naked short position, the counterfeit shares. GTII is a shell with potentially half a billion shares naked, naked short, that if those have to be covered all at once, you got to move upward. However, I just, the, the, the elderly management, and I'm no spring chicken either, the elderly management is, I think, holding back rapid action to make things happen at GTII. I've said this for months. I'm being even more clear now, perhaps. What news could come for GTII that's going to make anything happen that is related to GTII? I would argue nothing. Nothing. Except the resignation of David Reichman or some other final uh, uh, exit caused may, maybe by a vote or, you know, there's other ways of, of leaving. Other than that, we have the management we have. They're going to continue to uh, keep control of the company. And I don't see any news coming from GTII that's going to cause the stock to squeeze from GTII. But Alpine, run by John Hurry and Elizabeth Hurry, or they've got Alpine and they've got Scottsdale, they launched a legal fight when FINRA sought to get Alpine expelled, to get Alpine uh, prevented from acting as a prime broker. Why did they fight? Because the NSCC said in their court documents Alpine is deficient because of a, I don't know if they said large or massive or big, or they just left it as because of a short position in GTII. They stated it. I don't think they would have stated it except that it's a big position. So that is the potential energy behind a short squeeze. That news won't come from GTII. What's the news? What's the news? That news won't come from GTII. That news will come from FINRA, the court system, NSCC. When is the court system going to come to a resolution on whether or not FINRA has a right to regulate Alpine, has a right, FINRA has a right to exist, and whether or not FINRA has a right to expel Alpine? I don't know. But when it comes, whoever is now in charge of the Alpine corpus is, I think, going to have an incentive to buy back that short position. Now, has it been moved out? Possibly. It has. Possibly all of the crossing and spoofing and all that has moved the position elsewhere. Possibly the apologists say, ah, oh, that's no way. They've never shorted that. You're wrong. It, they're never could. There's systems in place. It's a piece of shite company anyway. There's no value in GTII. It shouldn't be trading at, at 30 cents. Well, what should AMC have traded at 
seventy dollars should GME have traded up at forty-five, whatever the numbers were. Short squeezes take on a whole different role. Chuck now JGT is the next move. I like that, Chuck. Um, uh, I've been trying to get my GTII dividend out of E-Trade. And uh, in my opinion, they should have just take lifted the legend off of every share in the system once GTI and in GTII's credit, in Reichman's credit, over the last two or three years, they've done everything on the side of the shareholder, everything, until he sort of tried to take control around August. Uh, I I think I don't think he's made a step wrong. And one of the things was issuing this dividend as restricted shares. And um, what I got from GTI, uh, from E-Trade this morning, well, you, you answered questions we asked of you two weeks ago, and that's part of the process. And I got frustrated. I said, wait a minute. I did answer them. Can you just tell me when my shares are going to be free to trade? You told me, E-Trade told me it would be two days, two weeks ago. Uh, there's no specific date, sir. So I think, Chuck, the there is uh, pro- there are problems being created by the the issuance of this dividend. Maybe it'll trigger a short squeeze. My guess is it won't, because they're going to continue to prevaricate, to delay, to to uh, make it about me. Last time I talked to them, they said. Well, we couldn't issue that dividend. This is, I'm paraphrasing, because GTII failed to timely file its 10K. I said, what, what? That's a big not for nothing. It doesn't make any sense. Hey, Mark. DBMM is the best play, has a real business, and the CEO defers salary. Well, um, the CEO and GTII deferred salary, and GTII had a business. I, I, Nico, I don't think I, I don't quite agree with you in terms. They do have a business, but all these CEOs have businesses, and they all have contracts, and they all have potential. And deferring salary doesn't do anything. The fact is DBMM entered into uh, horrific financing. It's not her fault. I don't know why a CEO would know any better, except that they're all pretty smart and they can read a document. The stock now trades at 0.0045. Let me write that down, 0.0045. So that's, no, no, 0.0049, 0.0049. And let's see what news, uh, I want to see when they did their last split, split. And I'm not, uh, Nico, I like the CEO. That's not her title. I've never spoken with her. I called in a couple of times. I didn't have a (laughs) digital brand and media marketing corp. I've listened to a couple of their presentations. And, uh, you know, it's as compelling as any other company with contracts and potential and all that. I give them credit for actively involving themselves in conferences and going online. Um, I mean, li- listen to their last news stories. Digital Clarity announces 
well, that's not that. That's not they. Is that their new name, Digital Clarity? No. So that's that's just a related company with DBMM. Uh, DBMM is presenting at the Emerging Growth Conference July 12th and 13th. That's tremendous. DBMM Group updates market on unprecedented year with positives looking into 2024. DBMN unveils bold strategic growth plans to propel shareholder value and expand opportunities. Um, Digital brand and media and marketing group, uh, Reggie James is featured in the Stock Dave podcast. DBMM group files 8K um, after SEC's dismissal order. DBMM to present an emerging growth conference July 12, 2023. Anyway, let me see if there's any more news. You more. I would I would um, give them Nico top grades for participation or communication with investors. Um, I think the CEO, is that's not her title. I think she is fighting the Kramers and has helped our, our cause. So I only have positives to say for uh, DBMM and their team. But, but, um, I, let me just see disclosures. Okay, here's, oh God, I don't want to go through all those disclosures. Let me go to the news. Strategic Alliance with Leading Transformation Consultancy. Uh, let me go to security details. They've got an authorization of 2 billion shares. They've got outstanding shares of 825 million. There's 779 million held at the DTCC. Okay. On well, I can't find if they did a reverse uh, split because the news doesn't go back enough. Uh, so we're left. I can't tell you when the reverse happened. I There's too many disclosures to go through. So anyway, it's trading for half a penny. What we can tell, Nico, on Yahoo, what we can tell is um, over the last year, the stock's high was 0 0.0188, so almost two cents, almost two cents. And the low was 0 0.0015. So you're up from the low, but I don't know. Um, I just don't know when the, what the split was. Institutions own 2%. The last split, it says, was one for a thousand. What? Did they do a one for a thousand share split? I don't, I didn't, I never saw that. So I'm, I think that must be old information. They do have $22,000 in cash. 
They have $3 million in debt. And they did a deal with the Kramers. So anyway, Nico, uh, this, I think it's a stock to pay attention to. I really admire uh, this the, the head uh, person. She's doing a great job. But I think it's going to be a long battle before this trades. What I'd rather see is one of these other stocks, like um, uh, there's a stock that Ham talks about that's related to this one, which I don't speak about anymore, but I think that could have a move. And then this one will move. And it'd be nice to build a position in DBMM as long as you set it aside and you're not watching it every day because I think it's going to be a long slog before they get ever get out of the trap that the Kramers put them in. That's my opinion. It's just my opinion. You, you do say that about dummy. I do say that about dummy. Oh, here we go. The last reverse was to, okay, good. That's good news, Nico. I take that as a positive, actually. Um, 80, I'm not worried about 80 million shares. Uh, that's not dilution necessarily. But if the last reverse was seven years ago, that's good news. That's good news. That means she knows that further reverse splits help Kurt Kramer and his clients. So that's good news, Nico. That's good news. Look, all of these companies have a tough fight. As soon as you take a deal from Kurt Kramer, you could, you might as well work at Walmart. As soon as you take a deal from Jeff Easton, you might as well work at 7-Eleven. It's tough to get out of these deals. So the reverse was one for a thousand. Wow. <laughs> that helped Kurt Kramer. Um, let me see the news. I want to read this this alliance they just 11 days ago. Digital Clarity, a leading digital marketing management consultancy, and the wholly owned operating flagship and brand of DBMM Group, a fully reporting U.S. public holding company, announced a strategic alliance today with award-winning privately held strategic transformation consultancy, one over OV many, over, I guess, one over many. Both companies are announcing their new partnership today. This powerful partnership brings together two industry leaders to offer co comprehensive solutions that drive growth and innovation into agile organizations for businesses across Europe, the United States, and beyond with selective measurement. Um, sounds good. As the business landscape continues to evolve, at an unprecedented pace, the need for agile, integrated, yet futuristic strategies has never been greater. With this strategic alliance, DC and 1OV Many combine their respective strengths to provide clients with a holistic approach to business transformation. Quote, we are excited to embark on this journey with one OV many, said Reggie James, founder and CEO of Digital Clarity. 
quote, by combining our deep understanding of digital marketing strategy with their expertise in strategic, sustainable transformation, we are uniquely positioned to empower B2B tech leaders to navigate the complexities of today's digital world and achieve their growth objectives with full potential, unquote. The value proposition for clients represents full service with the silo approach prevalent in many advisory companies eliminated and the solutions become seamless and fully collaborative. Digital Clarity brings years of experience in digital strategic digital market management offering tailored strategies that resonate with target audiences and drive tangible results. From market research and branding to lead generation and customer engagement, digital clarity is committed or should be, sorry, is committed to advising clients to maximize their potential, which edges out any competition. One over many specializes in digital transformation, helping businesses harness the power of technology to streamline operations, enhance customer experiences, and drive innovation through organization design and agility. With a focus on emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, IoT, and blockchain, IOV Many empowers organizations to adapt and thrive in a rapidly changing environment. Like Digital Clarity, One Over Many is based in London and uses words like they're based in Montecito and operates globally, citing many international clients as part of its roster. Jointly, by focusing on both internal and external strengths, The companies can leverage being stronger together. Prospective and current clients receive a unique way forward, which results in a competitive advantage. Together, digital clarity, and let let us show our clarity by writing run-on sentences paragraphs, being repetitive, and IOV Many offer a comprehensive suite of services designed to address the diverse needs of today's businesses, from developing integrated market strategies to implementing cutting-edge digital solutions The Alliance provides clients with one-stop shopping for all their growth and transformation needs. Tanner Kapukuchu and Mike Horworth are founders and co-CEOs of One Over Many. Tanner said, quote, our partnership with Digital Clarity marks a significant milestone in our journey. Having the ability to partner with an industry leader in digital clarity represents for us a level of recognition and opportunity to truly harness and enhance client engagements and deliver even more value than we currently do, unquote. By combining continuing a quote which was just unquoted, by combining our internal organization design, organizational design, change management, 
technical expertise and guidance with their external marketing acumen and execution, we are poised to deliver unparalleled value to clients seeking to unlock new growth opportunities, drive meaningful change, and achieve full, sustainable growth, unquote. The dynamics of having a seat at the table of clients, decision makers, exponentially increase a consultancy's value much like that of its attorney, attorneys or bankers. Whether clients are looking to expand their presence in new markets, optimize their digital infrastructure, enhance their brand visibility, the digital clarity and one over many alliance offers a compelling solution while positively impacting the environment and society. Together, they are committed to empowering B2B's tech leaders to realize their vision and achieve extraordinary success in today's dynamic business landscape through sustainable execution and transformation. We will share some of the results achieved on the way forward through updates and normal reporting. Digital Clarity is a leading digital market management consultancy and the wholly owned flagship and brand of DBMM Group, DBMM, a fully reporting US holding company. Digital Clarity helps B2B technology leaders achieve business growth through a series of marketing strategies that have been developed over two decades. DBMM is a fully reporting U.S. public holding company that trades on the over-the-counter market with its headquarters in New York City and it's 100% owned and operating subsidiary and brand, Digital Clarity, headquartered in the UK. About one over many, at one OV many, our mission is to help organizations achieve substantial, sustainable transformation and reach their full potential through expert guidance in areas such as organizational design, agile change management, and technical excellence in the areas of product operations and strategy. The foregoing, the foregoing contains predictive statements which may relate to future events and are only predictions. So that's the news that was just announced. And I can't help but point out to you, which will annoy some people, but things don't... The, the digital clarity and one OV Many Alliance offers a compelling solution while positively impacting the environment and society. There's 
That is not a proper use of the word impacting, but maybe it's accepted now. The alliance could have a positive impact on, but it doesn't, impacting is not a word. But anyway, we'll leave that alone. Um, I think that there's nothing in that news announcement that gives me confidence that digital clarity is capable of clarity. And there's nothing there that gives me confidence that one OV many uh, has a way of expressing st strategies in a clear way, much more, mu much more than uh, being able to outline a clear strategy. So I think they should go back to the drawing board on that announcement. But I have listened to presentations. There is growth in their business. But there's nothing here that will scare little Bill. There's nothing here that'll scare scare Seth, John Gotti, uh, Kramer, or Kurt, his brother, Kramer. So I, I really think DBMM is something to watch, maybe accumulate a position in, but I don't see anything in the near horizon that's going to uh, scare the Kramers and their clients. That's just my opinion. Sorry about that, PS21. If you were here, I'd let you, you talk. I don't know if I could be a preacher. Send your money and God will bless. Anyway, I don't know. I, I could do that. But having mentioned that, um, I've never asked before, and I'm going to for the next five days, because I have to go to New York. I'm going to try to go to London. I have to buy a new computer and other things. If you think of it, um, I put my Venmo details in the in some sort of description, and uh, any donation will be appreciated. I also have a strategy to pay back anybody that does it, and that's not relying on God. It's relying on what I'm what I'm planning in the future. But anyway, I really would appreciate any uh, Venmo contributions, anything. And I also, uh, I, lo I love that you speed it up. I, I, I appreciate that you tolerate my going on and on. Um. I was just trying to read the DBMM uh, news, and I, I don't see anything in it that's going to scare Kurt Kramer or Seth Kramer or, or their clients. Ham may come on, Rob, but I, I started at the beginning. I'm not promising it. Ham is playing pickleball and uh, did not ask me to join his call today if he had one. And he may have had one. But him, Bob, Rob, Rob Ben, ben Rob, Bob Wren. Uh, Ham didn't want me doing calls with him live anymore here because of my overreaction to questions and because I facilitate giving uh, the negative guy's access to him. He just didn't want to hear it anymore. 
So he's put me on a diet of joining his uh, phone calls, which you can find on Twitter and call in. And I'm usually on them with him. But, uh, 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 you yeah. know, yeah. I don't know if he's going to have a call today or not. Doesn't look like it. So I apologize for that as well. By the way, um, I want to come back down here and thank Barbara. Thank you, Barbara, very much for $20. I really appreciate it. I looked at my YouTube studio for the month to date. And my earnings month to date. Let me look. Let me look right now. We're like $1.54. So I've really got a I've got a monetize this somehow or I can stop torturing people with my uh, having to speed up listening to me uh, at one and a half times. All right, so now, Barbara, and I think it already includes your $20, my April earnings have skyrocketed to $49. That's great. I appreciate it. $49 is better than $1.54. But I'm I'm going to start doing some videos where I monetize them. I want to get a computer so I can improve my service, do interviews so you don't have to listen to me all by myself. I can have other people talking and I can stop hearing myself. Myself bores me. Absolutely bores me. So anyway, thank you, Barbara, very, very much. Well, Deacon Blues, right now, April earnings says $49.03. So at from Friday when I last looked to now, which I assume includes Barbara's very generous $20, it's gone from $1.54 to $49. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> Mark goes for two X. I'm starting to have a I'm starting to have a inferiority complex. Well, I look, I'm not condoning what happened on October 7th. It was horrible. And I'm I read the stories about the um particularly there was one woman I can see in her there was pictures of her running and scared, uh, just awful, awful. And uh, um, but come out seven, uh, um, I don't know how to say this to you, but Israeli soldiers and Israeli. One thing about Israelis. Um, uh, I don't know. Do you say it that way? Israelis in general and Jews in particular? Or do you say Jews in general and Israelis in particular? In my lifetime, I've always found them in any conversation uh, that's that's an argument, they're truthful. They adhere to the truth. They try to just to be um, uh, evidence based. Anyway, I'm not going to do it for you, but you can find interviews with Israelis, with soldiers, and even with um, officers saying that uh, I didn't ever said they ran into death. That's your words, but the crossfire. Um, I might have said they were running to safety, so maybe, maybe you're just, um, what's the word? You're just uh, paraphrasing, paraphrasing. But uh, the crossfire killed. You know, there were 1,700 killed, and from news sources out of Israel. And I can't remember them now because it's so long ago. Uh, but you, I'm sure you can find them. That Jewish news stories, Israeli news stories, um, however you're supposed to say it, 
pointed out that there were there were deaths caused unfortunately and horribly and by the way the the initiator was the crossing of the um, barrier so it still does and it's not good i do not condone it it was a slaughter but but by whom obviously people celebrating a muse, music being hit by bullets that's a slaughter you can you can if you look it up you can ascertain which direction the bullets came from both directions or only one i don't know i'm not claiming to know for sure i wasn't there it's horrible the 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 death and the the fear it's just terrible and for lives that young to be cut short i can only imagine but come out seven is it eye for an eye because if it's eye for an eye there's 30,000 30,000 palestinians half of which are children not hamas slaughtered slaughtered since then there's starvation hospitals can't work there's injuries there's no food there's no place to sleep entire neighborhoods destroyed buildings destroyed is that eye for eye i don't i can't win I can't win. <laughs> you've never been, you've never been a a uh, disappointment. You have been a constant critic. I don't mind criticism uh, if it's if you back it up, and you've always been able to back yours up. Um, I don't know that it you've been a disappointment. I'm trying to raise money for several things all at once. This is one source. I'm also trying to do it through the sale of assets, through uh, uh, leaning on, on uh, friends and family. But I'm trying to raise... Um, it's a lot of money. And so I'm not going to... I'm not going to hold you to it. I I what I'd like to do is travel for us. I'd like to get a new computer and my only selfish thing is I'd like to be able to get my eye operation, but that would help us too. But it is I have run in I have run my uh I'm behind on my bills because I've devoted my time to this. I'd like to continue doing this. I'd like to learn how to be better at it so that I don't get waylaid and I don't make people go at four times the speed. But I think the answer to that is better editing. And I, I think I need a like a partner who I'll have to pay for an editor. And I think I need to do interviews. That's what I think. Anyway, I want to, Beetlebug, I want to move forward in a positive way to help Jews, Muslims, Christians, non-believers, straight people, gay people, brown people, white people, everybody get ready for the financial challenges who are ahead, which are ahead. And that's that's my goal anyway. War is absolutely horrible. My, war is is absolutely horrible. Well, one definition of what happened is Israel was attacked. And that certainly looks like what happened. Um, there's an Israeli soldier who said it's impossible that any attack could have gotten across our barrier. We have the state-of-the-art 
and I don't want to get in all that. There's no question there was an attack, and there's no question that it was terror, terror. And there was, in my opinion, there's no question it should not have happened, should not have been done. So I I agree. There is a PayPal option. What? How do I find my PayPal? How do I find my PayPal? There is a PayPal, Scott. Let me look it up. I don't know how to find it. Um, there is a PayPal. How do I find PayPal? I'm going to, you know, Google my email. PayPal. All right, PayPal. Money is waiting for you. This is from five years ago. Five years ago. Um, get to the details. All right, my PayPal. See, this is the problem. All the saved passwords go. to the, an email I don't use anymore. I am human. Hear me roar. But we haven't confirmed it. Use your email. Let's see, I... Let me see if this email will work. Maybe. Let me see. No. Okay, let me try it again. I don't know, Scott. Um, let me work on that for tomorrow. I, what's happening is it's directing me to an email I don't use anymore, and I'm using my new email. In it. Anyway, I'll have that for tomorrow, Scott. I'll have that for Scott. Yeah, Pharaoh, I would do it. I was uh, asked to, and I would do it. Um, I think there's probably other people that would do it too. The key, Pharaoh, is um, to me, I would immediately, whether through a money raise or issuance of shares or both, I would immediately add cash flow to the company. And then I would add growth in assets. But I would put so much pressure on the shorts, it wouldn't stop. And we'd get there. We'd get there. That's it, Lafi Hatum. Um, I often wonder what would cause someone to do that kind of action. And um, there's a Jewish guy named... Uh, Finkel, Finkelstein. He's his parents died, or or were sorry they were in the prisons and they met there. Uh, Norm Finkelstein. Darn it! I hope I don't have Biden disease. Norm. Yeah, Finkelstein. And 
he is amazing to listen to. And he it's his belief that they were justified in what they did. I don't go that far because I don't think it's right to kill or attack any human being. But if you listen to Norman Finkelstein, he describes Gaza Strip as basically 25 square miles. To my memory, he said it's 21 miles long and five miles wide. And you can't go anywhere. I, I'm not sure any of us could live our entire lives in what, what Norman Finkelstein calls. It's identical to what his parents, his I think it's his parents, were forced to experience. And, and it's awful. So I hate war and I, I don't agree, just to be clear, uh, I'm not anti-Israel and I'm not anti, uh, I don't know how to say this, anti-Jewish. I'm not anti, uh, and if I'm misstating, it's just I don't know how to say it. I'm not anti, uh, uh, I'm not for <laughs> what happened on October 7th in any way, shape, and form. Yeah, that's it, the kids. It's the kids I drive me crazy. Well, Pharaoh, I don't know that it's going to be ter ter the Toronto. Is that how it's spelled, Toronto? I'm not sure it's going to be that. But there are other minds, and I'm working closely with that guy, and he's got such energy, such drive, that I think um, we can make GTII, whether it squeezes or not, I think we can make it a valuable company so that everybody makes a return. I think that. Wow. What's that? 500 smackers. Thank you very much, Candy Morton. I I really appreciate it. I, I actually care for all of you guys. Um, I hate it when I get negative feedback because I I, I think I should have gone done better. I love your puppy dog. I love your puppy dog. My poor dog is getting so old. I walk him. But his, you know, when he's standing there, his back legs sort of fall back on him. But he still has his puppy ears. And uh, he's still a good boy. Thank you so much, Candy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll come back to you. I'm not leaving you. Trento, yeah, T-R-E-N-T-L, yeah. I know, that's it, Matt K. It's just to, ma and imagine if you were born there. You're 15 years old. You've never been anywhere else. I mean, at least you have the sea, and at least you you have your family. But man, so. yes, God bless Candy Morton. God bless Candy Morton. Thank you. I'll do it, Scott. I I don't know. You can see I'm amateur at this, but I have to get more um I, I just I just was pointing out the lack of clarity on those on that thing I have to get clearer I have to get better at making this pay for itself month in and month month out because um it's draining and I'm not my best person, but it's draining financially as well as it is um, 
on my psyche. But I get a lot back from somebody like Candy Morton and um, the puppy dog who needs a hug. And even from Beetlebug and from and from Scott. I have PayPal, but I have to get it to work with my current email. And I'll do that tonight. Thank you, Barbara. There wasn't anything fundamental that made GTI go to pennies, Nico says, but to dollars, but it happened. That's true. Um, it's the threat of a squeeze. And, and if Ham is correct, and I'm inclined to believe him over the apologists. Kurt and Seth Kramer, along with their clients, have built up a massive, just like they've done in DBMM or other stories, they've built up these massive uh, counterfeit share positions, which as they come up off the mat and they become valuable, they start squeezing the pocketbook, and that's what that's what ca causes a, a squeeze. Let me just go up here. Am I troubled? The price hasn't multiplied. If the news released is good, caught me there. Are you talking about DBMM? Uh, I think the news is decent on DBMM, but I don't think it's enough to make the stock go. I don't think it as scares anybody that short the stock. Um, news that's come out on finger so far, I would say the same thing. I don't think it as scares anybody uh, that is shorting the stock. I think there is news coming on finger and performance more importantly, that will as scare them. In the case of GTII, I don't think there's been any good news recently. The TLO product um, uh, is not, I'm not a doctor. And I've only read part of this book, which I tend to I intend to read in full. I probably won't highlight it because the gentleman, the doctor signed it to me and I don't want to ruin the book that way. But I did study at Beetlebug over the weekend and in the plane and my two plane trips. And uh, let me just see if he talks about it here in this book. Yeah, telomeres, 66 and 67. Okay. Um, Wow, it's just, <laughs> it's so much stuff. Let's take a step back and see the science in action. Your native stem cells are the ones from which all other cells, blood, brain, and more are derived. Stem cells can become new stem cells by dividing and propagating. Stem cells are maternal because we know that the world is maternal. The, the world is female, not men. I think, I think men can look out for their offspring as well. But anyway, stem cells are maternal. They come in and fix things. They achieve their ends by repairing damage in the body, by replacing damaged cells or growing into new ones. This is how all parts of your body heal. 
when you scrape your knee or have a sunburn, it's not cells from neighboring skin that come into the rescue. It's stem cells, assuming your blood supply is good. This goes for a heart attack, infection, or other internal threats. The proteins that nourish stem cells are called exosomes, if I pronounce that correctly. And they foster growth and help stem cells develop into a new version of whatever's needed. Heart, muscle, skin, brain, what have you. One key, which I just alluded to, you need healthy blood flow to make this work. Telling the stem cells where to go. And that's what they're finding out in the, they call it Telamine 1, the product. When they directed this for um, osteoarthritis, for inflammation, they found out that this blood flow was having other good effects. We used to think stem cells were immortal. It's not true. Researchers have found stem cells only live through 40 to 60 duplications. And this is called the Hayflick limit. And she, they had a picture of her. I think she's a woman. Anyway, your your stem cells in your body only um, can reduplicate 40 to 60 times, according to this book. In the meeting I was in, they said 70 to 140 times, whatever. There's a limitation. Okay, one indication that you are near death is that your stem cells have too short an end called a telomere to duplicate. So the, these endings are like on the edge of your um, shoestring, that little plastic thing. That's what they compared it to. We repair ourselves over and over again when we're young. And to have youthful longevity, we need to replenish our supply of stem cells. That's what this book's about, or at least part of it. But that's what Telomere 1 is. And the Telomere 1 product is... Uh, I don't know that your statement's 100% correct. There may be a stage of FDA approval, which it's gone through. I don't know. I'd have to check that. But they are going first, Beetlebug, through lab, lab rat tests. That's for two months, lab rat tests. They're doing that now. They're setting up for six months of laboratory dog tests, beagles, poor beagles. They always use beagles. But they're going to do the beagle tests, which should be finished by the end of the year. And then next year, they're going to do human tests. But you are correct. Um, the FDA has to review, review the findings. Um, they haven't seen any severe side effects. In fact, what they've seen are positive effects. And the, when on Monday, when I was there, listening to him, doctor, 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 talking to doctor and doctor and doctor and Johns Hopkins and, and Georgetown Medical School and Kennedy and I mean, doctor, doctor, doctor. What they found, Beetlebug, Contrary to negative severe effects, they actually found that the telomere, that little shoestring that gets run down on, on your DNA, had grown, had grown by 40%. And so the, the point 
of this book. Could we reprogram old cells to be young again? Could we rewrite our DNA to guarantee uh, fighting diseases? Is 90 the new 40? The, 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 it's much more likely, Beetlebug, that this telomere growth is going to cause um, um, moral issues, moral questions, societal questions, than any side effects that are severe for humans. The, the example he gave is people go to get stem cells injected in their body. And this has been going on a while. As far as I know, it hasn't had severe uh, side effects, but you, you may know more. But you get 8,000 stem cells. This is my memory of the presentation. Well, your, your body stem cells to repair a sunburn or to pair, repair a cut or repair, um, I don't know, after a disease or a sickness. It's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of stem cells, which need to be put to work. Well, this telomere one, if it works, and they haven't said, they have not said that they've gotten through human testing yet. They expect that next year. But the excitement, Beetlebug, at the meeting amongst doctors, doctor, 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 is this growth in the telomere by 40% implies that each of us, the young and the old, can add 10, 20, 30, 40 years to our lives. And we can add 10, 20, 30 years of youthfulness to our bodies, youthfulness, usefulness, younger. We can become 10, 20, 30 years younger in many of our body's um, uh, capabilities. Why? Because what limits our body's ability to regenerate as it does in our teens, 20s, and 30s are the shortening telomeres, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And this molecule they've created extends the, the telomere, which allows the body to replicate its DNA, well, its stem cells. And I'm giving you my translation of what I heard, but it gives the body the ability to produce its own stem cells. Hundreds of millions is one number I heard versus 8,000. So it's huge, Beetlebug. I don't, I don't see it that way. Of course, the criminals, and I talked to the guy, they're just going to destroy the stock because these criminals don't want to live longer. Let's see where Telomere closed. Yeah, they got it down. They got it down to dollars and 38 cents to 560. But that's where we put our society's efforts to these chosen few guys, mostly men. I don't know any women that are counterfeiting stuff. I think it's mostly these, I think it's mostly men who think somehow they walk on water. And they deserve to, every CEO, every new therapy, every breakthrough has to be met with negativity and the negativity should be materialized now so these saviors can t suck out tens to twenties to hundreds of millions of dollars out of the market. So Beetlebug, we can't, a company like this, tremendous management, Tremendous vision, 
can't not implement what could be historic life-changing technology. The criminals have to suck out that money because they're here to save you and me from the potential of not dying when we're 70, but dying when we're 110 or 15 and not living our old age in a home, but living our old age on a tennis court or a golf cart. But this is what we this is what we've done to our world. I want to see how uh, logic closed because I think logic is a trade, guys. Logic closed at 0.0375. Um, 0.0375. Let me quickly say logic. L-G-I-Q. I'll put the symbol up. A trade. A trade, not an addiction. A trade. L-G-I-Q. Four cents. Right now it's four cents. I I think it can go to a range of 20 cents to 40 cents in a reverse merger, which has been announced all along. They 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 failed. Remember Aubrey Advisors, who's who have done well over a hundred SPACs and D SPACs, great guys, good as their word. They somehow uh, thought it best to leave Logic with no money uh, when they de spec So Logic did not get its final, a number of things accomplished. One, it did not get its reverse merger done before the end of last year. Two, because of that, they have to file their annual report for last year. They didn't have enough money to get it done. But all respect, good guys, capable, company after company turned to them to sponsor. They didn't have the experience to realize that it was in the best interest of everyone to make sure that Logic had a little bit of money to get their, their year-end filings done. So anyway, what that means is Logic... Uh, logically had to raise some money to get those filings finished. They, as far as I know, they've raised all that money. The, the filings are in the process of being completed. There were many companies that wanted to reverse merger into Logic. And uh, the, the values ranged from half a million, my memory to as high as a billion. But if we just use half a million dollars worth and we use 10% for the good guys, for us. And if we go ahead and use the maximum number of shares, because I have no, I don't know, but you, you have to assume they issued a lot of stock because that's how Aubrey advisors in their best skill level, knowledge, and being good guys, that's how they left it. Um, if we take 10% of 500 million, that's 50 million, and we'll divide it by the full 250 million shares authorized, that's 20 cents a share. So 20 cents a share, once the reverse merger is announced, 20 cents a share is one target at the low end that the stock should trade to. The two risks are, is the valuation believable and do the new management team stay away from borrowing money from a Jeff Easton, a Seth Kramer, an Ari Rubenstein, is that his name? 
at Yorkville or, or other groups like this. If they do, there could be a short squeeze, or at least it will trade on a NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange on a reverse split, reverse merger basis. Anyway, you're, you're paying four cents right now. If it goes to 12 cents, that's three times your money. And I think that should happen in the next 45 days. Anyway, let's move on. P. I like the cut of your jib, PS71. I'm going to be meeting, I think, and that's partly why I'm I'm I've put this appeal out, Bishop's appeal out for money, is I'm going to stay in New York for two days, and um, maybe longer, and I'm going to meet with the guys at Go Logic, and the answer is yes. Um, I'm trying to put this gold deal, and I just talked to the principals there, into GoLogic with a, with a guy I'm working with and other transactions into GoLogic. Absolutely. I think the Logic deal is all but done. All that's left of the Logic deal is to have the CPA, an outside audit firm, wrap up the books and I, and I think it's done. Um, I have tried to contact Brent. Brent is swamped with um, with uh, logic. And frankly, PS71, I think you should look at RCRT. RCRT. That is the Go Logic is spinning off its uh, assets in part of its assets into the reverse merger RCRT. It's been so long since that's been discussed and announced. I think there's been some changes to what's happening there, but everybody is committed to making RCRT a bang up success. And I'll learn more PS71 when I go to New York. But I and this is why let me go back down to my favorite dog ever, Candy Morton. Thank you very much, Candy Morton. Um uh, and the best boy or girl in the world other than Lucky. Um I want to be able to pay my way to New York, pay to stay two nights, pay to come back, you know, and possibly, you know, pick up dinner if I'm pitching, like you're suggesting, pitching a gold deal to them, uh, be able to put out my card and pay for the dinner. So thank you, Candy Moore, um, uh, Candy. Um, I don't know where I am now. I'm going to go with Ru Rudy Myers. I I think he's and and Rudy. In fairness to some of the other points, an attack on civilians isn't right at all. But also, there are people in uh, the government of Israel that don't go along with this guy, and I'm certain to to an absolute certainty. Even though I might be using the wrong words, I might be a little impolitic, I am certain there's plenty of people who are Jewish who do not support Netanyahu's actions. Um, <laughs> Ah, Grant. Grant Stevens has a sense of humor. Stop talking about Palestine. Talk about Putin. Very funny. Um, yeah, let's do that later. That's a funny one, Grant. 
Well, I think that's right. The Israel of today isn't the Israel of the Bible. Um, you know, I, I listen, Robert, to a lot of things. Uh, and I try to hear and listen, you know, listen with, with trying to put, put myself back then. How was it then, you know? How was it before radio and TV and movies and, and uh, all the temptations? And I, I don't know, but I think Israel it might be an idea as much as a place, you know, but I don't know. Um, uh, what amazes me about the Jewish faith that I see, and I don't, you know, I barely understand my own, is just how dedicated to God and 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 how believing, how how seeking of God uh, the Jewish faith is. And how can you argue with that? God did give the land to Israel in the Bible. Um, yeah, it depends on what you meant by Israel. And God gave the, well, not in any written books, but God gave North America to the Indians, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's a struggle. You can't. I don't know. It's too much. It's too much. Uh, what is going on with GTII? GTII is in the throes. GTII is a shell company. It also is a company set up as an incubator for other companies where they get stock as that company comes in. Two years later or so, that stock is floated and GTI retains a uh, percentage in in lieu of the original position. GTII acquired gold company, medical company, tried to acquire a legal company, acquired a, uh, a uh, mining, uh, you know, bit, uh, a coin mining beyond blockchain company. It acquired an educational company. It acquired or tried to acquire um, uh, Shinu Ubi coins. It it tried to join upstream. It issued uh, a warrant as a restricted dividend. Um, uh, it they paid back the entirety of the note th that they borrowed from the Kramers and Power Up Lending. They they hired Wes Christian in order to go, and Sharontel, in order to go after the short sellers and, and the initial progress, I assume it's still ongoing, uh, but although I think the company no longer wants to pay for the legal bills, I don't know that 100%. They went after spoofing with 50 some market makers and that's in progress. They've pursued the, uh, or helping the FBI in the case against Westpac Securities. Uh, they have their own allegations with the FBI that they're pursuing and other uh, Department of Justice. Uh, all of this they've done. Much of it was countermanded by FINRA and the SEC and just our own actions counteracted. So GTII 
Than Lee every single day since David Reichman returned that that guy with the nose's phone call. Uh, you know, he's got a white fetish and he runs the boiler room. Anyway, ever since Reichman picked up the call and said, okay, I'm interested, they've been selling the stock short. The Kramers and their clients have been selling shares of GTII short. They got in trouble almost a year ago. And Alpine, it looks like, took over the position. But then for whatever reason, we all ran away and we gave them a breather. Well, that's all there. But the selling continues, Than Lee. It's the same criminal selling. But there is nothing in GTII right now which will scare the shorts. Absolutely nothing. The only thing in GTII uh, potentially is if control is transferred to a group of investors and we do something like bringing in a, a mining deal. I would be all arms open to that. I would also try to bring in cash flow. Cash flow. You buy back stock. You buy back stock. You give dividends. You buy back stock. When the stock runs a bit, you sell that stock without selling new stock and you make acquisitions. Initially, it'll be slow, but then suddenly you you send the, sh the short sellers on the run. But right now, there's nothing in GTII to scare the hurries or the Kramers. Nothing. Nothing. There will be. Alpine loses its case, but that could be two months away. It could be two years away. So there's nothing to stop it right now. So Than Lee, I'll talk about GTII again. Uh, uh, I told people from October, this is 1218. I told people, why not sell some or all of your GTII? Lock in your tax loss and buy it back in, in 31 days. Now, I think GTI's had a stock price of 17 cents. I can't get my dividends. Um, it's getting to a price range, Than Lee, where I think accumulating and buying might make more sense in preparation for the potential of a short squeeze. But I see no evidence of nothing, if I can use bad grammar, poor grammar. I see no evidence of nothing that'll scare, scare the shorts right now. So Than Lee, I expect further selling from the criminals of GTII. That's what the F is going on with GTII. I thought I was leaving. Do you want me to leave? Do you want me to leave? If you want me to leave, I'll leave, Kitty. I'll leave it up to you alone. If you want me to leave, I'll leave. Hey, Sideshow Bob. Well, I met uh, Kitty's Never Die when I was in London and then in the Middle East. I met one of the clients of one of my friends uh, was to my memory, and I could be wrong. He was an older guy. He was a U.S. Naval officer. I believe he was on the USS Liberty. And I had never heard the story before. And my friend said, you know, go sit with Dick, or whatever. I, I can't remember his name, but go sit with him because my friend had heard it so much. So I sat for quite a right long time and heard the story. And all I can tell you is I'm convinced that uh, the state of Israel 
attacked the USS Liberty. It's Jewish land. So that means they should expel all Christians, all Catholics, all non-believers, all Arabs, all Turks, all French. Is that it? I don't know. I don't know. They are not Palestinians, but Arabs. The Jews built their synagogue earlier than the Muslims. The Muslims built uh, on top of the Jewish temple, which was destroyed by the Romans, I guess. I don't know, DBMMMMMM. Um, as you know, you, you left out the Crusades, <laughs> which are confusing to me. I've tried to study it a bit, but the cat, I'm a Catholic. The Catholic Church, I think, was wrong, but the Pope called Christendom to go save the Holy Land. And as best as I can tell, the Crusaders went down through the land route and they won the first crusade. And sometime in the second or third, they also went over the Mediterranean. I think they won the first cr crusade. They established their uh, forts. And I think largely in the Gaza Strip and elsewhere, God's Acre, um, I, it's hard to remember all the different places. I think the Second Crusade was more of a draw, if not partially a loss, because I think that's when Richard left, and when the the king uh, with the with the leprosy was killed. But anyway, then there was the third crusade, and I think that's where Muhammad, not Muhammad, um, not Muhammad, Saladin won a decisive battle because of the stubbornness and the stupidity of that French crusader, or was he, Bel anyway, he was arrogant, and he went out into the desert, and he didn't have water, and they all died, and I think Saladin was gracious and respectful in the second crusade, but in the third crusade, he slaughtered everybody. And I don't know how that relates to building the mosque, but my guess is the mosque was built after Saladin won Jerusalem. Now, you know, because you've studied it, that it's a holy place for all three faiths. This was where Christ uh, carried the cross. It's where he was resurrected in the Christian faith and other things. It's where, as you say, the Jews built their synagogue, uh, have the Wailing Wall and probably others and they're awaiting the Messiah. But it's where Muhammad was lifted to heaven on a horse. I think that horse was called uh, uh, I think that horse was called Saddam, if I if you pronounce it correctly. 
not the sole of the foot, but I think it was. I, or no, no, no. It was called, uh, sorry, I think that horse was called Barak. I, anyway, you would know. But anyway, the, 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 the site on top of their, their, that synagogue is where in earlier times, I guess 600 AD, Muhammad was lifted to heaven. So you, you can argue who built what on top of what, but I wonder who started it all. And now you, I'll lose you completely. If you listen to Zachariah Sitchin, who um, in his Hebrew Bible, it's not called Bible, right? His Hebrew Bible class raised his hand and asked a question and was was kicked out by the by the um, uh, uh, teacher. I'm trying to think what a what a Jewish uh, uh, religious leader is called. Uh, my brain. Anyway, he was kicked and I had to talk to the mother. Well, Zachariah Sitchin believes that th the reason all of those big rocks are there, which no human, whether Jewish, Muslim, Roman, or Christian, could put in place. He thinks they were put in place by um, the Anunnaki as a landing place. Now, Graham Hancock doesn't believe it has to be that dramatic. It could just be that it was built pre-flood by a civilization that existed on, the, on our earth prior to the flood. My point is, we don't know who built what's underneath the, the, the rocks underneath the synagogue. That was torn down two or three times. We don't know what was underneath the Dome of the Rock. We don't know who put it there. So, yeah, I, I would agree. Anyone that uses civilians as shields are cowards and are evil. Do you think if we send money to Putin and Hamas will live in peace? No. We're going to war, Grant. We're going to war. Um, and the reason we're going to war has nothing to do with issues of Israel versus uh, Iran or uh, Republican versus Democrat or Hamas lover versus Hamas hater, or Putin lover versus uh, Zelensky lover. None of that. The reason we're going to go to war is to save the banking system. and We're going to save the banksters. We are going to go in a situation where we can take U.S. debt, which is as a ratio to our economy, at levels we haven't seen since World War II, we want to take it from 33 trillion to 100 trillion, 150 trillion. And the only way can, we can do that is to go to war. So we're going to go to war. We're going to go to war. Oh, no, you guys, you triggered him. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Kitty. I already answered that too much. Yes, I would do that, Then I would do that. I have made that clear, and uh, I would do it with a group of people, of course. But, yeah, I'd do that. And one thing I can tell you, within the rules, because you have to follow the rules, transparency would be number one. Number two, I guess, would be a little bit of 
gangmanship. So you wouldn't, maybe the, you, you wouldn't have any, you'd have to, transparency would be guided by that. But I'll tell you what, every single drive would be able, would be to make the criminals pay with their pocketbook for what they did. Hey, Donna, you guys are still talking about this, I guess. I hope we can recover. There's a lot of good in, a, in the United States, and our leaders can be replaced. Our leaders can be replaced. We are paying for all sides of the war in the Middle East. Can you believe that? All right, let's see what this. Your current, I, I agree with Davio. That's a, Daviolio, I think you shortened that so it's it's not completely transparent what you're saying. Uh, well, that's the wrong word. It's not. It's hard to understand what you're saying. But MMTLP is a chit. It's not worth anything. Right now, the only thing MM, MMTLP has going for it is it ostensibly can be converted into NextBridge. And I got mine converted. So when all of the shares that were allocated for MMTLP by NextBridge are taken, I think MMTLP will be worth only what people perceive a lawsuit settlement, a congressional settlement, or a financial settlement, or some combination of all three, is worth in the future. And I'm concerned that nobody's going to give that much value until there's clarity, which could be years and years from now. One thing that could change that is if we give to uh, NextBridge and McCabe the ability to go before the, the, the financial firms and say, hey, we, we issued all the shares, so anything in your account is fake. And by the way, because of the progress we've made at NextBridge, here's an independent report. Each share is worth, I'll make it up, $600 a share. So you go, you go settle that up with your investors. Uh, anyway, I, we're not anywhere near that point right now. So that's why I personally think and strongly urge that you need to move your MMTLP shares to well, it's called AST originally, but now it's called Kiwasaki or something. But I think you have to move it. Those citizens are on skiing trips. Well, and that guy, that guy uh, Zelensky. He's as rich as they come. Uh, news from Texas. Yeah, I, I went down. It was a great trip. Um, I'll show you some pictures. But I asked people. I talked to people. I have to follow up. But I decided today, Colonel, to go live. I'm going to go every day this week, and I'll ask for PayPal. I need to raise money. I need to replenish my my operating capital both for trips and what i've already spent computer you know all that stuff but i have to anyway colonel i have to follow up with the people i talked with and i will my bottom line perception i guess I guess a couple of things. One is 
the oil and gas business is back in play. There, there's energy, there's people, there's money, there's there's there investors are interested. So that's a positive. Um, I got to be careful how I say this. The Ora Grande project is not well known. So that you could look as a negative, but on the other hand, that's how it's been. This th these geologists, I think it's one, but I was told today it's brothers, but anyway, um begins with an M. <sighs> Masterson, Masterson, who came up with the theory to my memory of the Delaware Basin, part of the whole big Permian play, um, that's that's worked brilliantly, is also the one that has come up with this idea, if you look at the map, uh, of the, I wonder if I have that picture here for you. I don't know if I do. I, I think I printed it out. Oh, I do. I do. I do, I do, I do. Here, this picture. I'll ruin it with a pen. ruining this picture and I'll do I'll use another color <laughs> all right so in the orange in the orange is the Ora Grande basin there's the Delaware basin there's Midland but the the geologist Masterson came up with the theory of the Delaware Basin. And if you notice something, this was a shallow basin that over eons, water, life settled. And if you believe it's based on um, plant life and dinosaurs and silt and all that, it built up and it built up and it built up. Well, the... This is all the Permian age, and I'm I'm not particularly much of a geologist or anything, but it's the early Permian. So they call it the Permian Basin. And this area, and then this area, is what revolutionized recently Texas oil production. It really started with Mitchell Energy, uh, George Mitchell. And he had this idea that you could go in and with these tight sands um, drill and then frack the sands to get more production out of the sands, both in oil and gas, also drilling horizontally. And he's his company drilled under the... Um, uh, Dallas, I think DFW, which is where I was, or it was one of the airports. But this, that, they nearly went bankrupt a couple of times. And he had an engineer in his back office who came up, I think, with water as a fracking agent. But I could be wrong on that. But they came up on something that made it work. And all of a sudden, the shale revolution came and the tight sands revolution, which is drilling horizontally, fracking, and sucking the oil and gas out more quickly. Not really finding more oil and gas, just sucking it out more quickly. The other thing that changed it, by the way, is the Railroad Commission changed the, the uh, um, laws or the rules to that you could you could produce more than one zone at a time. That also it may in change the economics of these wells. But anyway, the Masterson's 
Delaware based and worked tremendously. And this is where Exxon bought the Pioneer at $30 a barrel proven. Well, this is Masterson's idea over here, the Aura Grande. I mean, I drew the circle that way, but it really comes down like this. And, and um, Torchlight originally reserved 134,000 acres. Here it is. Um, recoverable reserves. 2.3. The middle is 3.7. The high side is 5 billion. Recoverable reserves. Well, anyway, uh, Colonel, the, the one thing, one aspect of it is, well, I say, have you ever heard of the Oro Grande? And they go, huh? But the other aspect of it is when I use the number that I've seen on Twitter of 11 billion barrels and 13 billion barrels, I got two reactions to that. One, that's huge. Like, wow, that is big. <laughs> and two, it's not really believable. So what my takeaway on the positive side is if you came anywhere near like two, three, four, five billion barrels recoverable, that would be enormous. On the negative side, I wouldn't count on 11 or 13 billion without a lot more drilling and a lot more proving up. And I guess my third point is in terms of visibility and, and acceptance by the oil and gas patch, they need to drill a lot more. They need to move a lot. They got a lot more to go. So our thing we can do is to move our shares from uh, our brokerage firms to AST. Give Greg McCabe the ability to go in and, and rattle the cages. On the other hand, once that's accomplished, I think he'll have more success raising money to prove up our reserves. Um, hey, Frank. Uh, I don't know if I just gave you information. Um, I think the best news I've heard on MMTLP is as it relates to Donald Trump, another thing you can't talk about, but DJT and David Nunes seeking information. Ham is going to be meeting with those lawyers tomorrow. Guess what? All the work that you guys have done on MMTLP, I think is going to lead to David Nunes talking to Congress. One eighty four rising wedge, one eighty four, one eighty four, one eighty four. I don't know what stock one is at one eighty four. Hey, MB. Hey, uh, I learned, yeah, I tried to answer that. Um, what I learned, Sandman, is if you could put a new field discovery of multiple billions of barrels on the map, it's big. And I take that as a good thing because I believe there's multi-billion barrels recoverable. On the negative side, a lot of people don't know about the Oro Grande. But, so that was a positive. Um, I did not learn a lot about Southern Louisiana on that trip, but I intend to follow up on it this week and over over the course of the next days. Um, I'm going to go to the finger events at the end of the week. That's why I, I went on this trip and um, I just realized I can't travel that way on fumes. So I, I, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to raise money both for that, keep this little operation going, I'd like to buy a new computer and improve on it. And, and I want to travel to London too, where a lot of my contacts are. So I'm, anyway, uh, yeah, it was a very good trip.
So it turns out GTI management is about as good as MMAT. Nothing hand pumps does anything. Well, I disagree with you on a couple of things. GTI went from 20 cents to $9. In, in retrospect, and a lot of you guys out there did sell, in retrospect, we should have been selling seven, eight, nine dollars and gotten out. But I also believe that the short squeeze was occurring at eight, nine dollars. Unfortunately, we decided to go into COSM and Bravo on COSM, they took 35 million dollars out of the market. And they set themselves up for a lifetime. I think they paid for it. And I think the shorts paid for it as well. And I think they colluded, in my judgment, with the shorts. But, wow, they, they got a lot of money out of the market. And, and I think people with accounts overseas made a lot of money on that trade. But it stopped the squeeze, Bojangle, in GTII, in my judgment. Can I prove it? No. But in, in retrospect, that looks like that was the time to do it. Um, I think management decided to exercise control, get involved, and have done nothing but tarnish their own reputation and destroy the value of GTII. So if you want to judge it on that, maybe you can. But MMAT... Uh, continued to do business with the criminals even after they were warned not to. They And that's different than GTII. There's nothing I see that shows that GTII did further transactions with the shorts. So I don't agree. Um, but Bojangles, you know it, I know it. The the U.S. markets are set up so that criminals can sell stock that doesn't exist. And they do it without fear. They do it on a scale uh, through false market makers. They do it on a scale that makes them exceedingly rich, rich without taking any risk because guys like Gary Gensler Women like Adina Friedman could not care less. Hey, Barbara, thank you. Wolf is, I think Wolf is, uh, oh, Wolf is the one you're talking about. I like Wolf. And by the way, when I was down there, I sat with one gentleman on Bitcoin and energy and all of this, and I got ideas, and I would take them into GTII. Amazing, amazing. DCA, yeah, yeah. I walked through National. Oh, my gosh. It's so big now, kitties. I don't know if you've been there. But I've used Delta, which is the far end of the new wing, and there's a Duncan there. But if you go down, they've now added, that's, uh, is it A? I guess it's A. And then there's a C and a D. Maybe it's B. That's B, C, and D. And they've added an E. It's huge. National is huge now. All right, uh, Beetlebug, um, I'll put you down. You have to email me. You have to email me. I'm not going to talk about it tonight because I'm, I'm tired. Um, I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow for sure. But send it to Fair and Balanced. That's my name, Fair and Balanced. Fair and Balanced at gmail.com. And I'll write down Beetlebug. Hey, 
if it's right, and there, it's not without risk, but if it's right, you're paying a dollar for an ounce of gold. <laughs> and I can't beat that anywhere. Um, if it's correct, you're paying four cents a share for what could be worth forty dollars a share at a at a just a reasonable valuation. It could be worth a lot more than that. Anyway, we'll talk about it later because I I gotta go. There are a lot of unknowns of T. Lowen, and I Beetle Bob, I I am not telling people to buy it uh, blindly. And I'm also not saying don't buy it. Um, what I'm what I'm suggesting is TLO. The biggest risk in TLO is management is new. They're vulnerable to the liars like Jeff Easton, in my opinion, and uh, uh, Seth Kramer, in my opinion, and Ari Rubenstein, in my those kind of people. They're vulnerable to these liars that would put them in financing that destroys the upside of the company. But there's no question in my mind that Tilo has the potential. Look, Beetle, there was a time when if you put the story I just heard about Tilo in front of Wall Street, the stock would be 80 bucks just on the promise. I picked a number out of my hat. I think Wolf is a great buy. Um, Mark, uh, when I go, I'll be glad to meet up with you. Be glad to meet what, what up with you. There are, Beetle, you can't assume, you can't assume that the FDA is going to approve it. You also can't assume there's going to be terrible side effects because the FDA won't approve it if there are got to follow the science. I mean, look at look at all the people that didn't believe. Um, now you just got to follow the science. I don't agree, Beetlebug. I don't agree with you. I think it is truly groundbreaking, but they admitted they've got to go through the testing of the rats for two months, the dogs for six months, and then human trials next year. And they're not limited just to the idea that they can extend life. The, the original target of this molecule was to uh, attack inflammation. Just inflammation alone would be a success. But anyway, uh, they're not saying anything that you should buy now and that overnight it's going to be. No, there's a process that's in place. Uh, and and the risk is the criminals get a hold of the process by issuing a toxic financing. That is a risk. And so I would only look at TLO like I would look at, at Northwest Bio, like I would look at maybe DBMM, like I would look at several companies. Accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Trade some of the others. Take 10% of the profits for silver and the rest of the, some of the profits for accumulation. Um, I couldn't find anybody that knew anything while I was down there. And remember Ordinary Angler, it was a retirement party. Everybody's drinking, I'm not drinking. I'm trying to be serious. It just wasn't the right place. But the one of the gentlemen is coming up here to DC and on the 12th, I'll be going to dinner with him and I'll be able to get all these questions. I'll be able to prepare him beforehand and I'll get I'll get better answers. Hey, Nikolai. Wolf is great, Wolf is great. Zizu, you can connect with me in Dallas. Um, I wish I had connected with you in the morning afterward, but I'll be back again. I can tell that I, there's one guy down there 
I'm going to do business with, and hopefully you all do it as well. All right, I'm going back down to the bottom, and I have to end this pretty soon. Hey, John Croisson. My chat is scrambled and not in real time. Well, I was going back asward, that's for sure. And I do want to improve my computer. I, I, Lion, I just want to move forward. I've been in this. I've been asked not to, John. I've been asked not to. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything at all. And uh, um, if I were listening to me say that, I would take that request as a positive, not a negative, as a major positive, major positive. Um, Yeah, I'm going to reach out and call Richard, I, maybe today, but it might be tomorrow. And I'm I'm going to see if I can join his lawsuit and, or a lawsuit, start one against uh, for my shares. I, I don't know who the parties would be. It'd all be up to him. All be up to him. Um, and then see if more of us want to do it. Anyway, I'll let you know how it goes. I, he's in, I think the CEO of HNRC is in Williamsburg, Virginia. I've tried to reach out to him. I haven't ever been successful. The headquarters is based in Houston, not Dallas. And I will keep trying to reach him. Um, I have, you know, on this, it, HNRC was two and a half cents right there, two and a half cents. It hasn't done anything except go down. But um, the uh, Frank Kristen had an interview. He hasn't had one since where in the body of the interview, he talked about distributing for as a cash dividend the proceeds from his sale of non-core assets, which was roughly 15 cents a share at that time. It looks like he's issued more shares, so it wouldn't be 15 cents a share. He said that basically twice in the interview, but then in the question and answers, he implied that it hadn't been approved yet and the dividend might be stopped. He said that it would be done in the fourth quarter. Well, now we're in the second quarter. So I'm a little confused as why the dividend hasn't come yet. It could be he announced at the beginning of last year that he had entered into a financing for $10 million over a year ago. Is that financing with a toxic convertible group? Because that would make sense. That group would keep selling stock, selling stock that doesn't exist, and then give it to the company and then cross that position. That could be the case, but I haven't found any evidence of it. No filings, nothing. Um, uh, it also could be that whoever that banker was said, we want some of that dividend to get our deal done. I don't know. But for some reason, he did not issue the dividend in the fourth quarter of last year. He did not issue it in the first quarter. Now, my view is that it doesn't mean he won't issue a dividend. What I think it means is it's not going to be 15 cents. And it's probably going to be a lot less than 15 cents, maybe 5 cents. I don't know. I do think it'll be cash or some part of it. So the stock's trading at 2.5 cents and or at less, actually. Let me see where it's trading.
Oh, I got to type it in. Darn it. My eyesight's so bad when I hit something, I think I'm hitting the right place and I miss it. I closed it. Um, 0.0184, but I still think HNRC is going to issue a dividend, and I think it'll be more than that for sure. You know, maybe two, three, five cents, seven cents a share of cash. They also are going to issue their ownership, he said, of HNRA, and I, I did. There's no way to calculate what it's worth, but I think it's worth pennies a share, if not seven cents a share. So I'm hanging on to HNRC. I'd like to buy more if I could. Where has the money gone that GTII has reportedly spent? Do we know where the source of GTII funding comes from? I don't think that's the question you want you wanted to ask. Uh, about a year ago, the CEO and the board issued to themselves a lot of stock. So I want to say over 150 million shares, but you can look it up. They also issued to a charity 35 million shares, and I think that charity is run or owned by one of their sons. It's, you know, so it's not an arm's length. So they issued like 200 million shares. Now, they can only sell 1% of those shares every month because they're insiders. So, Sean, if you're asking where does the source of funding come from that goes to the officers and board members, that's where it comes They've been selling 1% of their position month in and month out for a year. And maybe you mean that's GTI funding. I don't. I think that's just they're selling their stock. I don't think there's been any demand or any request for GTII on the markets for funding. So I don't, I don't think that's the right question. Um, I don't think GTII really has spent a lot of money recently. Now, you are probably referring to losses and all of that in the filings. Well, these, these are non-cash. It's the issuance of stock. But that's my answer without looking at what you're asking me. Um, Sean, a year, over a year ago, and almost two years ago, the company issued warrants as a special dividend. Those warrants came into play in October, November of a year ago. I believe that a squeeze was going on. Fidelity was offering a thousand percent for stock. Apparently, Wells Fargo took away the buy button. And in to that, uh, GTII raised, I think the number was 3.3 or $3.5 million by the exercise of some of the warrants as the stock went to nine. I think they were at $2.50 a share. You can look it all up. So that's where GTII got some cash. Ah, interesting. Shiba Unu is in is getting to a new cycle. 0. 0.00002. That's interesting. Bob Barker. Hey Dosekis. I think Trump could do it. Um uh 
even even if he does it for his own reasons, it'll help us. It's all about greed. Well, that's a good point, Daly. I, I'm not, I don't want to be premature about it at all. And I'm not suggesting jumping. Now, uh, according to Ham and others, Tilo could be a squeeze because one guy owns the entire float and somebody's shorting the stock. And I think the shorts are in trouble in Tilo. So there might be a trade there, but if you're investing, I, you you know, um, there's testing that has to happen. So let me see this stock, Billy Ray. F A X F A X L F F A X L F. All right, I'll look it up. All right, Kitty, I figured. Because uh, I always get it wrong. No, I beat a lot. Hey, you're not. I'm, I have no argument with you. You in Tilo? It's too soon to know. Tilo, too soon to know. Robin Hood is full of S H Y T E. But uh, anyway, you can believe them if you want. Uh, but right now, until we move all of our shares, it's hard to prove. And and that's just how it goes. Uh, I don't think they will join blockchain. I don't buy that either. I happen to agree with them on that. But we'll see. I couldn't agree with you more, Jillian. I'm looking into a porch F S R N F S R N. All right, Lion. I'm going to. Save it for tomorrow because I want to sign off. I got to go walk my dog. Tilo success at the whim of FDA. Sure. But they can't argue with peer-reviewed results. We're a long way. We're a year away from that. But as the rat results show up, they're going to announce. And by the way, Beetle, I think they could have done a better job of announcing what they announced. But you're right. But the magnitude becomes so big that as stock trades up. There's no question. No question. There's two risks to TLO. One is what you're saying, side effects, FDA approval. But they, it's not a one product company. Let me say that differently. It's not a one target company. They're going after several things. So they don't need success only in one and not the other. They could just have success in veterinary trials and restrict the uses just to dogs and horses and cats and have a successful product. But the other risk is financing from from liars like Jeff Easton, in my opinion. Uh, CAUD is getting killed because the good guys at uh, uh, Aubrey Advisors, they're not doing it. Polar isn't doing it. Um, uh, Brownstone isn't doing it. And uh, there's one other group there. I can't remember right now. None of them are doing it. They've all done 
SPACs before and de-SPAC'd, and they have the highest standards. And, but somebody is, I think, has sold over 100 million shares, uh, a dollar's worth, sorry, a dollar's worth of CAUD, and they continue to do it. So RW, that is continuing to happen. And one of the results of that, RW, the completely disastrous DSPAC of CAUD. Aubrey Advisors, in their wisdom, after doing 100 DSPACs, they decided to leave CAUD with no capital. They raised $5 million. Half of it went to lawyers. Half of it went to financial advisors. They left the company with no money. CAUD's plan was to revert was to merge into different companies. Well, you I'll leave it to you if that was the best strategy. But I know I've have it on good authority that Aubrey Advisors, great people, uh, their word is their bond, and they know what they're doing. So what CAUD has been doing since. They've done two reverse mergers. Uh, not, sorry, it's the wrong word. Two acquisitions. So the negative RW is one of them was done at $1.20. This one, I guess, is done at lower prices. So the, the criminals, the shorts, it's not Aubrey Advisors. It's not Polar. It's not uh, Brownstone. It's somebody else. You know, these guys are all good guys. It's just somebody that showed up. Well, the, the, the fact is that by driving the price down, instead of getting deals done at $12 a share or $20 a share, you have to do it at a buck. So the good aspect gets dispersed across more shares. That's the bad news. But the good news, RW, and I'm going to try to do a video on it, is I think the CEO is doing a, huge, a great job. I think he is uh, aware of these risks. He loaned the company, I think, $300,000 without doing a deal. So I think he knows that he can't issue more shares down here. They've brought in two companies what what's the breaking point? The third company, the fourth, the fifth. By the time they agglomerate several companies who have cash flow, who have growth, who have earnings, you're going to scare the shorts out of here. And whoever it is, it's not it's not Aubrey, it's not Polar, it's not Brownstone, it's not whoever the financial group was. Uh, it's not, it's not, they, it's somebody. But as these revenues and growth and earnings come in and the stock price grows up, it's going to accelerate to the upside. And, and Peter Boards has built a tremendous team and RW, the target market is a trillion dollar market or more, and it's growing. So I'm really excited for CAUD. I also think you have to look at it as accumulate. And I think you have to be aware they could have a short squeeze at any time. You have to be aware the risk always is that some advisor is going to get through and convince them to, to take a dilutive toxic deal. But I don't think so right now. I don't think so right now. So I'll try to do a video on that, RW. I'm much more optimistic than negative on it. Lions, Lions looking for subscribers. Join him. Join him. He's very good. There's Candy Morton. His name is Gronk. I want to give Gronk a hug. 
And what a good boy. Gronk. I like Gronk. Lucky's not genderless. Are you just being mean? Don't be mean about Lucky. Lucky is a boy. Fisker. Fine, I'll look up Fisker. Um, that triggers my memory. Lou, I think if you're still here, sorry, I just saw this. Um, I got really skeptical about my 1260. Twelve hundred and sixty four shares. Um, and I paid the sixty dollar fee and all that. But you know what? They actually came. And I really think, Lou, based on uh, sort of going back over the numbers I heard, I think there's plenty of stock available. It's not limitless uh, in general. For people to ask for their certificates. I'm not sure though, specifically at Schwab or specifically at E-Trade, but um, yeah, I think you'll get your stock is my point. I think you'll get your stock. Just might take a little while. Well, Candy, that was one of the questions. See, you're very smart. When this guy was giving his presentation, Michael Roizen, he was a doctor. He was giving, he said, one of the issues, what if you live to 90 and you can work like you're 60? Should you still collect Social Security? Should you be on retirement? See, Candy, you're very smart. Very, very smart. Yes, ethical issues, philosophical issues. Um, as Sheikh, I, there's no update that I know specifically on MMTLP. I do know behind the scenes, there's heroes there working uh, and progress is being made. But Sheikh, I got to tell you, I do not expect the legal process to be quick. Uh, I do not expect Congress to act quickly either. The best hope I see is this Donald Trump pressure, DJT, amazing. Um, my hope is MMTLP. My hope is NextBridge. My hope is that Greg McCabe increases the value of NextBridge to a point that it cannot be denied to Wall Street. And one way we can help him do that is get our shares over to AST so that he can raise money in a traditional way. Now, I'm making the assumption that he has a hard time raising money traditionally while this cloud is there. I don't know if that's true. But if he can show a growth in the proof, anyway, of the asset base, he can go to Wall Street and say, look, there, there are no more shares of NextBridge. And guess what? What you have in your account, whatever you have, it's worth $750 a share by our, by our estimates. And we're on the way to proving it's worth $2,000 a share. And we'll, come, we'll get back to you in 12 months. That will trigger uh, buyouts. But, Shake, I don't think anybody should wait for an MMTLP settlement, uh, I think everyone should move MMTLP into the transfer agent, AST or Quixinity or whatever it is, over to NextBridge shares. If there's a settlement, you'll be, I, I'm almost certain, I would say really highly certain for a non-lawyer, 
that you'll get a chance to change your mind. Why? Because it'll help them settle it up. MMTLP is never going to trade. Don't wait a while for that. You're never going to get two days trading back. And the longer you wait, you run the risk that you left with MMTLP that cannot be put into NextBridge because NextBridge has already been allocated. So anyway. Yes, recruiter.com. I think you should look at that. Um, DBMM is pretty smart. Let me just tell DBMM. I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to spend forever on this, but, D, but DBMM is pretty smart. DBMM has made a good observation. All right, so DBMM. Here's what shortens telomeres. In other words, here's what ruins your body's ability to replicate stem cells. Stress shortens telomeres. People who eat sugar-laden and processed food, people who eat food which has been processed and has a lot of sugar, have shorter telomeres. See, pretty smart. People who do extreme physical activity have shorter telomeres. Astronauts have shorter telomeres. People who have sunburns or smoke or vape have shorter telomeres. People who have short sleep times have shorter telomeres. People who eat in a healthy way have longer telomeres. People who meditate have longer telomeres. People who have friends have longer telomeres. People who do moderate, moderate physical activity have longer telomeres. People who sleep six and a half to eight and a half hours a night have longer telomeres. People who regularly have sex have longer telomeres. So I guess um, I'm listed as C... CEO of VGLS. I am CEO, Jamie. I was asked to do it, and I said, sure. Um, they're, it, they're being worked on, and the only news that might come out, and I'll follow up today now that you have reminded me, they may announce that I'm CEO. I don't know. That would change anything. Um there are financials are going to be clean and audited. And I think what's going to be more uh, interesting as a shell company is what perhaps <coughs> we can do to add to add uh, to that company. But as of right now, there's no nothing pending. That I'm that that there's things I'm aware of, but there's nothing pending that needs to be announced. Uh, they're not in. That's a good question. I think the 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 FDA they may have looked at is. Um, osteoarthritis, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure they've applied to the FDA on that. Let me just see if there's any information. I'll... Hmm. 
No, I don't think there's any FDA. Um, here's some of their partners. Uh, IQVIA, I don't know who that is. Frontage, Eurofins, Charles River, I know those guys. Davos Pharma, Argenta, Premier Consulting, Anthem Biosciences, and In Silico Trials. Just the osteoarthritis market opportunity is seven and a half billion for them. I don't see Scott any uh, any uh, FDA status so far, and they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. They don't claim to be. Thank you, Candy and Gronk. <laughs> See, I would try to hug Gronk, but he probably wouldn't allow it. I don't think he would allow it. Yes, God bless Candy Morton. Thank you, Candy Morton. So I put my Venmo there tomorrow. I'll try to get PayPal up. I'm trying to reach a target to stabilize some things and to improve what I'm offering here with you, but also to ha I want to have an impact. I Like you guys, I've been waiting for some of these things to happen. I don't think, the only one I think is going to, uh, uh, move uh, with news his finger and the one that the other gentleman asked me why am I not talking about it that one the, and and I do think there's a trade in logic a trade 2x 3x 4x maybe 5x but that kind of trade but I've been waiting for all that but it's time to act so anyway let me um uh, let me go down here. Thank you very much, Candy. I'm thank you, Candy. I'll tell him. Did I get my email? Red Pepper. I didn't look yet. I've written Red Pepper down. I'm gonna write it down again. Uh, Mark. Mark guessed my problem. It's getting into the email. But um, I have contacted several of you, and I'm going to follow. Um, um, all right, John. Uh, uh, I'll write John Crossing down. That's on the um, on the lawsuit. Uh, and I wrote down your gold mine, Billy Ray. Uh, I will get into all that. Um, oddly, that trip I just took to test Texas took a lot out of me. And, uh, and it was just this morning when I woke up that I decided that I'm going to ask. I don't know where to turn. I'm asking who I know and can. But I'm going to ask. I'm going to make this better. We are going to win. We are going to have a win, and we're going to make sure that a group of us uh, are financial pillars of success. Hi, Sunil. All right, I'm going to sign off, um, and we'll and I'll talk to um, him. Uh, I wish everybody peace, love, and happiness, and I really do. I don't mean to offend anybody. When we start talking about war, we get into the particulars that I don't back down. But my overall point is it's going to change our financial world. That's really the point of all of this. Um, I'm not trying to, to uh, uh, upset anybody. And, and I really want to say a prayer for all the people caught up in uh, the, the children caught up in war, suffering and starvation around the world. And um, 
pray for world peace. And I'll say it out loud. I like to pray for Lou Bravo and his family and uh, pray for Jenny L and pray for um, the strength of uh, busy brands and junk savvy and Anna queen of trades and ham pray for his son. And it, uh, the list is endless. I thank all of you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I, I'm going to endeavor to do better. So um, next time I'll stay with you, Zizu. Next time I will. Zizu, I stayed at Zaza. Do you know where Zaza is, Zizu? That's where I stayed. And I they have my record for mine. I used to stay there. Um, but as I got home, I was like, gee whiz, I could have just stayed at the airport, you know. <laughs> All right, Lou, I'm gonna sign off. Catch everybody down the highway. <laughs>